Hello everybody, this is the third of our talks on the Easter story to help you with your Bible time lessons. If you remember, we were at the Good Friday situation when Jesus died in the last talk. I was in a school on one occasion around Easter time and I said to the children in their school assembly, I wonder why it's called Good Friday. Maybe it Sad Friday would be a better word because we're sad that Jesus had to die on the cross as we've been thinking about. And the boy put up his hand and he said, I think I know why it's called Good Friday. So I said, would you like to tell everybody why you think it's called Good Friday? So he said, well, Jesus died for our sins on that day. And that's good, isn't it? And I thought that was an excellent answer. A really good way of describing actually what happened on that first Good Friday, when we can really begin to consider the truth of why Jesus died. So we're on number three, and you know that we came to Good Friday and we thought about all that happened when Jesus died on the cross. We've been thinking about various characters, haven't we? We've had Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. And we've had Pilate, the Roman governor, who sentenced Jesus to death. We're going to have a new man this time. He's called Joseph of Arimathea. He lived in a place called Arimathea. Joseph uh, was a very rich man. And uh, because of that, he wanted to be sure that Jesus had a proper burial. You see, what happened was this. When criminals died on a cross, nobody bothered about them at all. Nobody bothered to make sure they had a proper burial. And sometimes the bodies were just thrown on a heap of rubbish. It was really sad and really cruel. But Joseph didn't want that to happen to Jesus. He was actually one of the religious leaders, one of those whose friends and the people that he knew had shouted, crucify him, crucify him. But I don't think Joseph had shouted that. I think he just kept quiet. Maybe he was frightened to say he should be let free. He kept quiet, but he was a secret disciple of Jesus. Now he thought, I must be brave. We can't have Jesus's body thrown on the rubbish heap. We must do something about it. And the only way to do something about it was to go back to Pilate. And he said, sir, when Jesus died, on the cross, nobody bothered about thinking about his burial, but I'd like to bury him. I don't want him to be buried like a common criminal or thrown on the rubbish heap. Please, can I have the body of Jesus? And he asked Pilate if he could bury Jesus. Pilate was amazed. He said, well, he's only been on the cross a short time. I doubt if he's dead yet. How can I give you the body? But he called for the centurion the man in charge of the soldiers who had actually been at the cross. And he said, is that man Jesus dead? Yes, sir, said the censorian. He died very soon after he was put on the cross. It was a very short time on the cross indeed, much shorter than usual. Very well, said Pilate. You can have his body, he said to Joseph. You can take him away. So Joseph and his friend Nicodemus picked up the body of Jesus and took it towards a garden very close to where the cross was. In that garden, there was a tomb. It was a bit like a cave. It belonged to Joseph. Only rich people like Joseph could afford to have their own cave or tomb made in the rock for a burial, and nobody had ever been buried in this tomb before. Joseph was very pleased that Jesus was going to be the first person to be laid in the tomb. So he and his friend Nicodemus took the body of Jesus, wrapped it in a cloth, put some spices there and laid it in the tomb. And when they came out, they rolled a big stone in front of the tomb so it was secure. The ladies who had stood by the cross, friends and followers of Jesus, came and watched how the burial took place. And what we can be sure of is this that Jesus was actually dead. Some people think he went into a sort of faint, but no, Pilate knew he was dead. 
the centurion knew he was dead. Joseph and his friend Nicodemus knew he was dead. And so did the women. Everybody was very sure that he had died. Well, the next thing that happened was this. The religious leaders weren't sure about what had happened. They came to Pilate and they said, look, that man, he said he was going to rise again after he died. He's definitely dead, but we don't want to make sure he won't rise again. We know he's in a tomb. Joseph put him there, but we have to make sure that he doesn't come out of that tomb or nobody steals his body and says he's come alive. Very well, said Pilate. You can do whatever you need to do. So the religious leaders got a seal. You can see a sort of rope that they've sealed across the rock. They put soldiers there to guard the tomb. They made sure that nobody could steal the body and nobody could say that Jesus had come alive. Well, after that, it became Easter Sunday, of course. Uh, Good Friday, then Saturday, then Easter Sunday. and. Very early that morning, some of the ladies who had watched Jesus be buried had been preparing some spices. They wanted to come and anoint the body of Jesus because they knew he had been buried in a hurry on Good Friday afternoon. So off they went. As they came towards the tomb, they were a little bit worried. How are we going to get inside the tomb? That great big stone is in front of it and we're not strong enough to move it. They didn't know anything about the soldiers and they certainly didn't know anything about the seal. But they thought, well, maybe somehow or other we'll be able to get into the tomb. We must anoint the body of Jesus. Jesus has done so much for us. This is the least we can do for him. When they got to the tomb, they had a tremendous shock. The soldiers were lying on the ground, almost as though they were dead. And the great stone had been rolled away. And they could look inside the tomb. And when they looked, the tomb was empty. Jesus had gone. They couldn't believe their eyes. Jesus actually wasn't in the tomb. But they'd seen him put there only a couple of days before. And now he had gone. What had happened to Jesus? And suddenly they looked up. They had another great shock. There was somebody in white clothes speaking to them. It was an angel. And this is what the angel said. He is not here. He has risen. Go and tell his disciples. They couldn't believe what they had seen and heard. And so they left the tomb and they ran through the streets to the place where they knew the disciples were. And they told them, there's good news. There's great news. Jesus is not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. The angel told us he is alive. And the men there The disciples, they could hardly believe their ears. Jesus, alive? I don't think at first they really did believe what the ladies said. But soon they went, Peter and John particularly, and they found it was just as the ladies had said. The tomb was empty. Jesus had gone. The greatest news ever. Jesus is alive. It's the wonderful news that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. I've been to Jerusalem on a number of occasions, and I think my favourite place and all the places I've visited around the world is this place here. It's a garden, and in the garden there is a tomb, just like we were thinking about from the Bible story. And some people think, we can't be 100% sure, that this is the very tomb where Jesus was placed by Joseph and Nicodemus on that Good Friday afternoon the day he had died. People can go there. And as you can go into the tomb, you can think, I'm in the very place where Jesus was buried. And I'm in the very spot where Jesus came alive all those years ago. It's a very special place. They don't have a stone across the front these days, but they have a door. And that door simply says this, he is not here for he is risen. The very words that the angels said are on that door to remind us of the fact that Jesus is not in the tomb. He is alive. 
Last time we had the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 and 4 and they are the key verses for level 3 number 3 Bible time. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and that he rose again the third day. The greatest most marvelous news there's ever been and words that we can take to our hearts at this Easter time. I hope you all think very carefully about what happened on Good Friday and what happened on Easter Sunday. And you can just thank God that Jesus died for us on the cross, but that he came alive to be our friend and our savior forever. We hope you have a really great Easter time, but never forget the true meaning 